and step right up and get your tickets for another moment in gaming history. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, officially welcome to the channel. This is something I call a moment in gaming history, where we look at various different moments across history and see how they apply to gaming and what was important. Today we have one that's more of a development technology rather than just a specific moment, but I think it works. Earlier on, we had talked about carts on this channel and how important they were to giving developers more freedom and more opportunities to be able to do things in more creative ways. Today, we're going to talk about the next evolution of that, the compact disc. We're going to talk about where it came from, who made it, which it was a joint effort, actually, and its impact on the gaming environment and the balance of power in gaming around the time that it actually came out and gained popularity. So stick with me. This one should be pretty fun. Now, we've talked about physical media before on this channel, most notably carts and how big a deal those were, allowing programmers not only to use programs stored on ROMs by a cart to be addressed by microprocessor, but the amount of space leading to much more interesting and creative direction for the medium as a whole. Now, carts were generally small in size, anywhere from a few kilobytes all the way up to a few meg, the largest one I can recall offhand for early cartridges being in the range of 24 meg. This isn't counting the ones manufactured today on the Switch, mind you. Those are a bit out of scope of the air I'm talking about here. I mentioned this all, so when I mention the size of the compact disc itself, you realize just how big a change this was. Because on average, a disc could hold anywhere in the range of 650 meg to 700 meg. This made for a vastly larger storage space, and a big, big change for the medium. Because, well, okay, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about the compact disc and where it started, before we get into how it was used in games. The compact disc was originally developed as a joint project between Philips and Sony, and intended to store digital audio recordings. It was released in 1982, and intended to be a replacement for the aging cassette tape medium because the reliability and fidelity was much improved in this medium overall, making a far more reliable, if bulky, way to listen to your music, and as a result, quickly replaced the cassette as the dominant medium, though most audiophiles would stick to and prefer to still stick to old vinyl for its warmer and less compressed sound. The medium would continue to evolve through the years until around 1988 when it was first introduced to a video game console, the TurboGrafx-16. This was the first CD add-on for a video game console. Now, there's no way to underestimate just how big this was for the video game industry. Stages could be more elaborate, as there was far more storage to use. But the most immediate change was in the audio quality. Given the origins of the compact disc, it would come as no surprise that the level of depth of the music titles that were used in the medium was a vast improvement. Gone were the MIDI and chip tunes that had been used for years now, and now you had full-on professional audio tracks. Some of the most notable coming from games like Lords of Thunder on the Turbo Graphics. This took a creative and fun shooter to the next level with driving beats that they could put behind them. It wouldn't take long for Sega to follow suit with a Sega CD attachment on the Genesis. Done mostly as a reaction to the Turbo Graphics and to beat them to the punch, it was quickly made and launched in the States catapulting the gaming industry into a rather odd era of full motion video games on home consoles. Now, these games had existed for a long time, going all the way back to the Nintendo's 1974 Wild Gunman game. But this was the first time they'd really taken off on a home console. A host of games appeared like Sewer Shark, which was an early packing game, Night Trap, which was notorious along with Mortal Kombat for ushering in the video game rating system, the technology even ushered in a rush of new competitors to the market like the short-lived CDI and 3DO consoles. These were some of the earliest entries into a fully CD-based home console system. However, these two would pale in comparison to what was to come in December of 1994. The PlayStation would launch. This would have a worldwide release showing many of us just what the medium was fully capable of. PlayStation games made full use of the improved audio and storage space to bring us new worlds, fully spoken character dialogue, and many other features. Now, they weren't necessarily the first to do any of this, but they were one of the ones that got the most popular and put it more in the public eye. On top of what they could do with the technology, it was also far cheaper than using carts. ROM carts were becoming more and more expensive again, 
making card base medium cost double what the CD medium did. The N64 cards, for example, were around $80 a piece, whereas PlayStation 1 CD base game would cost you around $40. In fact, this kind of move was one of the major moves that caused Nintendo a comfortable position at the top of the console chain, as many developers didn't really want to work with the 64 meg cart restriction that was the common size of the N64 cart, when they could work with the much larger size of the newer CD-based medium. One of the major developers and staunch supporters of the Nintendo system, Squaresoft, was one such developer. They wanted the increased bass to be able to do more orchestral music, better animations, and larger worlds. Many other developers would follow suit, not only for these reasons, but for various other reasons as well. Nintendo wasn't really known for being the easiest and most reasonable to work with during this time, quite frankly. So it was that the humble compact disc not only began bringing music to us in ways that we had never heard it before, it also radically changed the landscape, types of games, and balance of power in the entire industry in just a few short years. However, what do you guys think of this one? Was this impactful to you as the invention of the cart? Was it more impactful? What medium did your first console use? What were some of the limitations you experienced with it? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. If you could do me one more favor and drop this video a like, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you aren't subscribed, please consider it. But until next time, happy gaming.